Uh, the title of this sermon is To Be or Not to Be. Glory to God. And um, let me just say this, uh, that the world is always trying to make a name for itself. People are always trying to make a name for themselves, and, um, and, that's, the, and that's the way the world operates. They're trying, you know, the world wants to get famous, and the world wants, you know, five minutes of, of, uh, of uh, fame. And you ever, you ever watch a newscast, and they're, maybe they're, uh, the newscaster's talking, and you have somebody in the background going, <laughs> have you ever seen that? Yeah. That guy's trying to make me hey, you know, because people want to, you know, people want to be seen, amen? And, um, and it really, it's a spirit of the world that, that wants to make a name for, for themselves, um, and we're here to make a name for the Lord. Amen. And we need to be very careful that we're not getting caught up in trying to make a name for ourselves, uh, that we're not just focused on us, but we're focused on the Lord and the kingdom. And, um, and so we need to be very careful. And, and, and that's the world. The world focuses on, it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the boastful pride of life. And, and that is passing away. And so we need to be very careful that we're not getting uh, sucked in as Christians into that vein. It's easy to get sucked into that. And, you know, it is, um, you know, the, the Bible says actually that, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So it's, it's, it's easy in God when you're following God. Amen. It's easy, but, but even if you're a Christian and you're not living like you need to, it's hard. It, it, you know, it, it can be difficult because there's no grace in going against God's word. There's only grace going with God's word. So we need to be very careful that we're not allowing worldliness to come into our equation. We need to be very careful that that we're not allowing that. And so I'm talking to you today, and we picked this, um, it, it's like a half of a tree, one bearing fruit, and the other looks a little wi withered, you know. And, uh, and God wants us bearing fruit, and he wants us bearing good fruit. And, uh, you know, it's not really hard to bear good fruit if we stay in the vine. It's only when we get out of the vine that it's difficult. And you may say, well, you know, God is in us. You know, God may never leave you, but can you leave God? That's the question. That, that is the question. Can you leave God? I mean, God won't leave you, but can you leave God? We leave God when we disobey him and walk away from him in disobedience. We need to be very careful that we're, not, that we're obeying him. Amen? And so, <clears throat> let's look at this. Let's look at uh, Matthew 5. And this is uh, Jesus. And, he, and this is... Uh, one of his um, sermons, it's called the Sermon on the, on, on the Mount, and it's one of his famous sermons. And let's look at this because I think it's very good. And this is going to help us. I'm going to say this, that if you want to grow as a Christian um, uh, and you want to really walk the Christian life that God wants us walking, spend a lot of time in the letters written to the church. Um, start reading the letters and I'm telling you, those letters uh, um, is written for us. We're talking about uh, Romans, Ephesians, and the rest of the letters. And so, um, uh, in the New Testament. And, they're, and, they're t and the letters are there to teach us how to um, navigate this faith life. Amen. And so, uh, let's look at this. Um, and I'm going to say this. Uh, I did minister last month about, you know, the kingdom of God and, um, that is a right, I, I ministered last month, a right side up kingdom. And, but um, uh, the enemy wants to make it look like it's an upside down kingdom and that his way is right side up. But really, the kingdom of God is right side up. And let's look at this here. It says here um, um, in chapter 5, verse 1, it says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up to the mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who persecute it for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Now let's look at this one. Uh, we don't really like this, but um, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Is it then good for nothing but to be thrown and trampled underfoot by men? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. For I, sh I surely say, for surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one, not one, or pass away, one jot and one tittle will by no means pass from the law till it's fulfilled. So we see here, that this, this is commonly called the Beatitudes. And uh, it's good just to read, you know, the sayings of Jesus. We are followers of Jesus, so we want to heed what he says. Amen. And so here he's saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, um, he's not actually saying blessed are the, the person that doesn't have any money. He's saying poor in spirit. You can, you can have uh, $30 million in the bank and still be uh, poor in spirit. Are you hearing? You could have all this w monetary wealth, but still be poor in spirit. Sometimes we think if we have all that we were believing God for, you know, the mansion on the top of the hill, the helicopter behind her, you know, on the landing pad. And, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I, uh, I saw a poster one time that uh, had this lush green lawn, you know, perfectly manicured, uh, had this beautiful, probably a 10,000 square foot home, had a, had a Porsche in front of the house and a helicopter sitting there on the landing pad, you know, and, it's, and it said, all I want is world peace and this, you know? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, we, we, can, we can identify with that. Oh man, yeah, that's all I want is world peace and that, you know? But uh, we need to be very careful that we're not running after riches, that, that we're not looking um, uh, for just the, you know, just walk for the blessing. We're not walking this life just for the blessing. Thank God for the blessing. It's for us because all blessings are given to us, are bestowed upon us. We're already blessed with all spiritual blessings, the Bible says, in heavenly places. But we need to realize this, that, that really the, what we have and what we need is we need a hunger for righteousness. So um, more than a hunger for things, more than a hunger to, 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 you know, food or having the best clothing, which God's not against all that. He's for prosperity. Pr prosperity is in the covenant rights. But, um, you know, the Bible says that he would make even, he would bless us so much that he will make even Jews jealous of us. And Jews are, Jewish people are supposed to be known to having money. Amen. I mean, who owns Hollywood? The Jews, right? So uh, a lot of them are the, the Hollywood directors and all that. And um, so, uh, so it says, Blessed are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So this is where we need to recognize ourselves as Christians. We need to recognize if we don't have God, we're poor. If we don't have the word of God in our life every day, we're poor. If we're not seeking God, we're poor. If we're not... You know, if, you know, it's so easy um, for the things of the world to captivate us. And it's so easy to get captivated by the, allure, the allures of the world. Um, it's interesting. Uh, even back when I was a young Christian, uh, uh, man, well, it was really way back there. Way back there when I was a backslidden Christian, let's put it that way. <laughs> Has anybody ever been backslidden here? And, uh, and, you know, I was in backslidden Christian, and I went to Vegas a couple times. And, um, and I went out there gambling. 
but I was backslidden, backslidden, okay? And um, you, you may say, well, what's wrong with gambling? Well, I, don't, I can't go all into that. They gambled for Jesus' clothes because it's, it's, it's a, a gamble. We walk by faith, not we don't walk by a gamble. So, so we don't just gamble. We're not just gambling that Jesus is going to take us to heaven if we walk upright. We know that he's going to take us. The only way I'd gamble if I know it wouldn't be a gamble. It, the only way I would gamble in something if I know that I would win. If I don't know I'm going to win, I'm not going to gamble. Unless it's a foolproof, 100%, I'm going to win. And then that's not gambling anyway. Right? So that's not gambling. But I went out there gambling and, and even, um, you know, uh, and man, and I gambled and I won. You don't want to win. <laughs> because you always we think that you're going to win. The last time I gambled, I lost. I, and it wasn't a lot of money because money, you know, but I lost. And I said, man, I lost. And, and it was like the Lord said, you're going to always lose when you gamble. You can't gamble in the kingdom of God. You can't just gamble. You will always lose. You will never win because what's not of faith is sin. Amen. But what we tend to do is we tend to, and we got to be very careful that we're not being allured. And, and when I went to Vegas, it's interesting. They have all these lights and it's so bright. You know, you know heaven's going to be bright like that too. The devil's a counterfeiter and it's so exciting and, and all this and you got all these bright lights and you know, and, and, and it's so captivating. It, it draws you in. Amen. And, you know, you heard the commercial, right? You know, um, you, the commercial about Vegas. What, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, your money. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, you heard that, right? You know, you can get away with it in Vegas. You can, you know, go down to Mardi Gras and, and get some beads, ladies. And you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's. But, but, you know, God is all seeing. He sees everything. Nothing gets past the Lord. Everything is bare before him. And so it says here that we need to have always um, a hunger for spiritual things. The enemy will try to come in and allure us, or get us drawn into other things that may look more exciting than the things of God. You know, it's not exciting when you're walking with God and Things don't seem to be happening like you want them to happen. The prosperity is not coming as quick as you want it to come. And it seems like you're standing way too long for the promise. And the devil is always out there saying, well, why don't you go a different way? Why don't you? You don't need to go this lowly Christian walk, you know. Do a different way. That way is the way of death. Yeah. Amen. And, it, you, and, and the enemy will make, always try to make you think. That, uh, that that way is going to be much more exciting. I, I, um, I played cornhole the other day, last Sunday. I think we had the, it was it last Sunday that we had it? Uh, we had the, um, the, the fellowship dinner. And I played cornhole for like three hours. And you know what? I, I was getting, I'm getting good. I mean, I, 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 I'm pretty good at cornhole. And uh, Mike Nunes is really good too. We might need to be a partner here. And uh, I'm so excited about Cornell, I'm about ready to go professional. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and I, I'm looking up professional games. Actually, there's a professional game coming up next Saturday. And I'm thinking, man, let's just blow off the men's meeting. I'm going to play Cornell, you know. <laughs> let somebody else run that meeting. Because uh, I'm going to be I'm gonna be the Cornell champ. Because, I, I, you know, I, I'm that, that good, you know. Or I think I'm that good anyway. And, um, and so, um, but it, it's okay. You know, cornhole, okay, and we can play. And I'm thinking about doing a men's, you know, um, you know, like a, a small group, a cornhole group. How many men might want to be involved in that? Where we can come together, we can play cornhole and talk God. Amen? And, uh, and, and put God in the middle of it. Amen? That's what we want to do. That's why we want to develop groups. And we want to develop groups. They can be fun, but then we can mix in with the world and then try to get not be a part of the world, but get the world knowing that there is more than this life than cornhole. Amen. You know, you could say, well, cornhole is kind of like the kingdom of God. That hole is kind of like the pit of hell. You know, <laughs> however you want to talk to me to get them closer to God, you know. Um, 
Uh, you know, you, are you hearing what I'm saying today? Or the cornhole could be likened to um, make, you know, hitting the mark with God. And you know, when you don't miss, when you miss the mark, you, you got to have something when you miss the mark, and you got to have Jesus, you know. And so you, you can turn, in, you can make any kind of illustration to bring the kingdom of God into your equation. So here, um, uh, so I want to say this, that now I was, I was so focused more on cornhole. I'm being a professional, and he said, aren't you trying to do this for a men's group, not just go out there and win a trophy? I said, that's right, Lord. Yeah, and I, I kind of got off track here. I, got, I, was, I was already cornhole champion next week. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? But the enemy wants to get us sidetracked, doesn't he? He doesn't want us to realize that there's people and there's multitudes that are in the valley of decision and that we are placed here to, to draw them out of, you know, that wayward path into the path of life and that there is a reason why we're here. And it's not just for our own personal gain. It's not just for our own personal selves. You know, um, it's amazing to me when we get so focused on ourselves um, all the joy, when I get focused on me and my own personal life, my own personal, need, personal needs, um, I, I'm not a happy Christian. I don't have that much joy. I'm more focused on, Lord, when am I going to get mine? You know, and, uh, but when I'm more focused on trying to be a blessing, tr you know, trying to help others, I, I, I find that God starts blessing me. I just find it's, it just, it happens. God starts doing stuff. Let me give you an example. When, and it's easy to get off track. Look at your name and say, it's easy to get off track. Um, um, we can be on fire for God one day, and we can be lukewarm the next day. We can be serving God and, and excited about the things of God, and then we could be just almost backslidden the next day. God wants us hot for him all the time. He wants us focused on him. He doesn't want anything taking us away. He doesn't want anything that's taken us away from him. And so we need to keep fervent in our love with, for the Lord. And, um, and so, uh, you know, uh, so we need to realize this, that it's more blessed to give and than to receive. I'm trying to think of my illustration now because I just lost it. And um, I'm flying now. Okay, Lord, what, what was that illustration? And, um, and so we have to get to the point where it's not just about us, but it's about others. Yesterday I received a phone call that, um, my grandmother was in the hospital and this was the second time and my parents were there and they needed, you know, some, some support. They needed lunch. And, um, and so I was, you know, I was kind of focused yesterday more on myself. I was watching tennis, you know, it's kind of a, sort of a half day off. I am preparing for the service as well at night, but, um, uh, but I was focused on watching tennis game and, um, and, uh, and my mom called and said, Hey, can you come out? And I'm thinking, and I've been just kind of laying around, and I'm saying, yeah, yeah, I can come out. I had no problem going out because I knew I was just kind of being selfish, kind of not really doing anything, and I needed something to kick me out of, out of the house. I needed to take a shower. You know, I was laying around, not shaving, you know, just kind of laying around being a couch potato. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But I had an opportunity to, to, to be a blessing. And, and I, I didn't, it wasn't like a negative thing. I was like, I'm, you know, I was kind of thankful that, that I was pushed, oh man, I, it's, I'm a pastor, but I'm not only that, I'm a son, and I just need to be a blessing. And so I took a shower, and, I, and you know, I wanted to watch the game, but I said, well, I can always record it. And, uh, and so I, you know, picked up some lunch from my parents and, you know, came, went to the hospital and um, prayed for my grandmother and brought some food to them. And, um, and guess what? The game was in the room. My dad had to play into it. So, so I didn't miss out on the game. I was still able to bless my parents, still be a blessing, but God allowed me to watch the tennis game with my, my dad. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? And he, and he was saying, listen, I'm not looking to kill your fun. I'm looking to enhance your fun in the way of building the kingdom. I'm not trying to get you to shut down, you know, your hobby. I'm just saying just to get God more in your hobby. I'm not trying to get you, I'm not trying to, destroy your fun I want you I want to enhance your fun by you walking in the kingdom way doing the kingdom way and the blessings will be on that oh you hear me? but we have a tendency to be uh, we can get more focused on ourselves 
more focused on, well, God, what have you done for me lately? Have you ever felt that way? It, and the enemy wants us to you know, measure. Okay, God, I'm not, been, I haven't been seeing blessings. Listen, the, the blessing is that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. <laughs> and, and that you still have a fear of God. When you lose your reverential fear of God, um, you're on that precipice. You're on that edge of falling off. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? We want to still have this heart for God. The enemy is trying to turn people away from God in the end days. The Bible says even the very elect will be deceived in the end days. Who's the elect? The saved. So how can we be? You can't be deceived if you stay in God. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's truth that we're saved by grace, not a worse that any man should boast, but we're saved as we as long as we stay in the boat. But if we get outside the boat, we could lose our salvation. And what I mean by that, more than just our salvation of heaven, that the kingdom benefits of love, joy and peace and life, abundant life, we can forfeit the abundant life. That God wants all of us to walk in. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? The peace and the joy of the Lord. The kingdom of God is righteousness, is right standing with God. Not only our positional standing by the blood, but our right standing in walking upright in our character. Right? So it's not just a positional standing of righteousness, but it's a heart standing with God. I'm walking right with you, God. It's not just, listen, we're not here just to obey the letter of the law. What? Listen, uh, whatever your weakness is, it, whatever your weakness is, you can, you can externally cut them off, but internally keep them. What, Pastor? You can, you can set up all the, 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 the stuff. You can, you know, say, you know, whatever your weakness might be to not go there by the letter. But if your heart's still going there, you're still going there. Even though it may look like, I'm not going there, I'm not going. Yeah, but is your heart going there? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? You can cut off all the stuff externally, but internally we got to cut it off. Amen. So it doesn't matter if it's cut off externally and looks good from the external. What about the internal? Are we cutting those things off of our life on the internal that could cause us to lose our life? To lose the abundant life that Jesus paid for? Because Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly, full of life. Really, the life really in God is a relationship with the Lord. We should be striving with um, uh, developing our relationship with the Lord. It's not just keeping the letter of the law. It's not just trying to obey and, and hold out until, until Jesus comes back. It's not like that. It's really about abiding in him and developing our relationship with him and having a love for the Lord where you don't want to turn away from him. Amen. See, what it is is the enemy wants us to develop a love for everything else. Right? For us to love cornhole more than Jesus. That's just an example. It, it, it's, it's, it's whatever is taking the place of God in our life. Or what can take the place of God. It could be like this. I just don't really want to be under any authority. I, you know, I'm just not ready to commit. You know, like even in church. Like we're going to have a class uh, at, the end, uh, at 12 o'clock. And some people are, are struggling with... Now, I'm still going to, I'm not really too sure if this is really my church, so I'm not going to, I'm not ready yet. Listen, it's time to get in. Amen. Time to get involved. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance, the Bible says. We're going to be judged. It, it, we're going to be judged by what we've done in our body and if we obeyed God as Christians. That judgment, uh, We'll, we'll be determined if we're going to have rewards or if we're going to have no rewards when we get to heaven. If our, if our running with God was in vain or if it was fruitful. Amen. 
And I don't know about you, but I want my walk to be fruitful. Amen. Amen. And I want my fruit to remain. And it's really not hard. We have to, well, in a way it is, it's hard on the flesh. Flesh is very deceptive. The flesh is a, is a mindset um, for putting you first place. That's what the flesh is. It's a mindset saying, I, I, I'm putting me first. That's what the flesh is all about. It's a mindset. Um, um, it's, uh, you know, sensuality. Uh, being sensuous. You know, which it is always, it's connected to being sexual, right? Sensuous. But it's kind of a negative side of it. Um, it it's based on senses. It's based on that we want to, um, that people want to uh, gratify their senses, right? And we got to be very careful that our senses don't get out of control. Amen. Romans 12, 1 and 2 um, says, says it this way. And, and Paul says, I beseech you by the mercies, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice which is your unreasonable service. No, that doesn't say that. Which is your reasonable service of worship. So our bodies have to be, we have to put down the things that will try to drive us into the wayward path. The, see, the devil, the number one target uh, for, the, for the devil is the Christian. You'll find that Christians seem to have more problems than unbelievers. And you say, why is that? Because the devil doesn't really need to attack the unbelievers that much. They're already in his kingdom. So he can give them riches. He can give them the things that fulfill their fancies. They, they can have all these things because he doesn't need to shut them down. He's trying to get the, he's trying to get the Christians to look at the world and say, the world doesn't even, it doesn't even seem like that they have any problems. And I, since I started serving God, it seems like all I have is problems. Has anybody ever felt that way? Come on, people. It's like, my Lord. It was like, it seemed like I was a happier person before I even got saved. Have anybody ever felt that way? You, you know, it seemed like I, I didn't worry about life. Now it seems like I worry all the time. You know? <laughs> no, we're not called to worry. You're not, you know, you no, know, there is a place in God that you can walk with him, but you've got to disconnect that thing in your brain that says me first. And you got to pull that thing out and say God first. You got to disconnect that thing. Unplug it. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? You got to consider your, your, your body dead to the things of this world. That's what the Bible says. You got to crucify that thing, that ugly thing. Amen. And um, so. So it's not just an outward expression of righteousness that God's looking at. It's, an, it's the hidden man of the heart. It's our motives. It's how we think about things. Um, I, I'm, I'm becoming less judgmental. And I hope you are too. <laughs> because, you know, I, 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 I tend to, I measure people on, on my standards. Well, you know, we're not all the same. And, you know, for somebody, you know, somebody that, oh, I'm just like you, then, then, then one, of us, we're, one of us isn't needed. And it's probably you. <laughs> no, God created us all differently. And God has blessed each one of us with gifts and talents and abilities to affect people that I, can, I can't affect people that you can affect. My personality may not, may not affect somebody like your personality may affect. I mean, each one of you are individual and God has blessed each one of you with, a, with, you know, gifts and talents and abilities. Amen? To touch people. So we're here to really to seek the kingdom of God. And when we're doing that, we will build the kingdom of God. And uh, we won't be so focused on ourselves, but we'll be focused on the kingdom and what God wants us to do. Let's look at the, the second one. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Um, the Bible actually says that there's a place sometimes where we feel like that, have you ever felt like, am I ever going to be able to attain to that place 
it seems like I can never do right or it seems like I can never get it right. Have you ever felt that way? Has anybody ever felt that way in here? It seems like I, just, I wish I could just get it right. It seems like I mess up every day, you know, or, or at least every other day. Or it just seems like I can't get it right. And it says, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be covered. We have to get to a point, and, we, and the Bible even talks about that, that even in our own ability that we mourn, you know, that we, we mourn until our bodies are redeemed. You know, when you get saved, your mind is not saved. What, pastor? I thought my whole body was saved. No, 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 your spirit's saved. See, you're a spirit. Your, your house is your body. This is what you live in. This is your earth suit. Right? And uh, you have a mind, which is your will and your emotions. Your mind, your will, and emotions. Your mind, your soul. You have a soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. That's the thinking part of you. That's the reasoning side of you. And then you have your emotions, right? And so um, your spirit is renewed. You're a brand new spirit. Uh, uh, and so... And so what we need to do is we need to be feeding our spirits with the word of God. But if we're feeding our, our minds with fleshy things, then we're going to want to go towards there. And our spirits are locked down, per se. And our flesh is running. And we need to shut down our flesh and let our spirits be ruled by the eternal, by the Holy Spirit. They who are sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Right? And so here he's saying, Blessed are those that are mourned, for they shall be comforted. Paul writes in Romans 6 about sin, and he talks about that the things that I want to do, I don't want to do, and the things that I do, I, you know, the things that I would like to do, I don't do, and the things that, um, that, that, that I'm always seem to be battling within myself to do right, and, and, but I seem to do bad at times. And he talks about this in, in Romans 6, and he goes through Romans 7, and Romans 8, he says, but, but therefore there is now no condemnation in, in God. Um, that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Um, so he talks about that, that sometimes in our walk, it's a fight to walk before the Lord. There's a time where you have to crucify yourself. You know, you have to crucify not yourself, but your flesh. You have to crucify the flesh part of you. And walk upright. So here, he, he says here that, he says uh, in Romans, he says, who shall deliver me of this body of death? You know, and have you ever felt that way? You know, you know when you're eating that donut at 12 o'clock at night, who shall deliver me from these donuts? You know, uh, my God, I'm trying to get in shape. I, I hate the way I feel and the way I look and, you know, and do you know what I'm saying? Have you ever, and how come I seem to always get gravitate towards the jelly filled donuts, you know? Flesh, flesh. And so it says here, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. So he said, who shall, uh, you know, deliver me from this body of death? So, and, and it says in Romans 8, it says that, that we groan within ourselves until we're totally redeemed. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? We only have a down payment of our salvation. We don't have full salvation yet. Because when we have full salvation, we're going to have glorified bodies. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? We're going to be just like Jesus. And, and we're going to... See, listen, down here is we got to pass the test. What pa test are we trying to pass? The love test. What do you mean, Pastor? See, we're going to have... The enemy is going to... Even with Christians, he's going to try to dangle things in front of us to get us going the world's way, even as Christians. And what it is, it's the love test. Are we going to love God more than we're going to love the world? See, the reason why I think he has to do this is because a third of the heavenly host fell. Okay? And that was the angels, and they got caught up in pride. And so, and so he's going to make sure that when we get there, we're not going to fall in heaven. So the testing time here is down here on earth. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? So, so we're being tested down here that are we going to obey or disobey? Or we're going to, you know, the, uh, I like the, script, uh, the song that says, Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
Sometimes you don't want to obey God. The flesh doesn't want to obey God. Your spirit does, but the flesh says, forget about it. As they say, forget about it. The flesh is, is, is unruly. Oh, you hear what I'm saying today? You've got to crucify that flesh. Amen? How do you do that? Well, you do that by fasting and praying and get into the word and not letting the flesh tell you what to do. Amen? So it said, blessed are they in the morning. So we should be at a point when God, when we start seeking God, there's going to be areas in our life that God's going to say, listen, you need to straighten up in the, this area. You need, you need, you need to start moving. It, you're, you're growing now. You, you're not a baby anymore. You can't be doing these things anymore. You can't keep going back into sin. It's time to start moving forward. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to keep, mo- you got to get moving, you got to move forward. And, and, this, and that means that we need to mourn, you know, we mourn when we're not, okay, God, I want to get, I want to move to the next level. I want to bear fruit in you. Um, so, so the enemy, what he will try to do is he will put these allures to try to draw us away from the things of God. And, 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 and the world is very alluring. Uh, entertainment is very alluring. The video games are very alluring. We can spend hours on video games, hours doing this. And all the enemy's trying to do is kill our time, destroy our time. I'm not against these things as long as God is put in the middle of it. Look at this. It says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek. Meekness, I, I heard one minister say, is not weakness, but it's strength under control. You see, see meekness is, is a way, is an attitude. Th- these are, a, these are be, to be added, these are be attitudes. Uh, it's an attitude that we want to uh, always be hungry for the things of God, number one. An attitude to, to when we're not measuring up to the things of God, when we're not doing what we know we should do, we should, we should mourn, we should have a repentant heart. Like, man, I didn't see that. Lord, forgive me. I want to do better. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? We should have a, a repentant heart. A repentant heart is more than just saying, I'm sorry, and going back into the things, those wrong things. That's the worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry for what I did to you. But I really enjoy doing it. But I'm sorry that I got caught and I'm suffering the penalty for it. I'm sorry that I'm suffering a penalty for it. That's a worldly sorrow. That ends in death. But the godly sorrow is turning away from that thing that you're sorry for. Amen? Are you still here with me today? <laughs> you know, when the Lord revealed to me, he, says, he said to me, uh, I was praying and, and the Lord revealed to me, he said, listen, you don't have a ministry that just coddles and just pets people and tell them that they're doing a wonderful job. That's not really what your ministry is designed for. You're called to get, to get people walking into a, to a higher walk with me. So because of that, people are going to hate your message because it affects their lifestyle. It affects the way they live their life. So people are going to hate that because you're telling them they've got to straighten up and walk right. And so even as a Christian... And so, so it affects a, a wayward lifestyle that, 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 you know, the pleasures of this life. So, beca- and it's, it's called lifestyle. And most people rather have lifestyle than God. Oh, you hear what I'm saying today? You, in other words, if your lifestyle is, I like to go fishing on Sunday morning and church inconvenienced me, well, you rather have lifestyle than God. It's the way you live your life. Are you still here today? Yes. Yes. Amen. And so listen. Oh, man. Let's continue. So meekness is that we need, uh, meekness is, 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 is a heart of humility towards the things of God. We got to stay humble. When we're being corrected, don't get mad when we get corrected. Get humble. Don't get angry when we have when we get when we're under some correction. Because the Bible says when we're walking with God and we start going away we're way, God will correct us. And don't get mad at God and get offended with God. No, drop to your knees and repent. Thank God that you are being corrected. So you won't be caught up with the 
with the unbelievers. You know, there are going to be some Christians, saved people, that, that will end up in hell. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Just study all the epistles. Just read it. Read every letter. You, I, I, I try to go with the once saved, always saved. I can't, I can't, I wish it was, I wish it was so. I wish it was. I wish I didn't have, I wish it was because then I could make excuses for my sin. I can't make excuses for my sin. Amen. I wish it was a once saved, always saved. It is if you stay in God. Yes. You will always be saved as long as, long as you don't leave him. Amen. High and dry. He won't leave you, but you have the ability to get off the boat. Okay, let me say it this way. Paul, and you can just study it all out. Just study it. Every epistle, there's a warning. Stay away from sin. Walk upright. <laughs> every epistle has the warning. Right? Read every letter. Even the Ephesians has the warnings. Every letter is there's a warning of, of judgment. Every letter. To the Christian. The letters are written to us. It's a warning. I'm here to sound the alarm. Some of us are on the edge. Don't live on the edge. Don't live in the fast lanes. I had a dream the other day, and I, I, uh, I tend to kind of, you know, I have a personality that likes to live on the edge because it's exciting. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's exciting just to make it right there at 9 o'clock at church. See how, how, many, you know, how fast you can get there. You know, live on the edge. You know, but you can die very quick living on the edge. You don't want to live on the edge. You want to live right in the middle of God's will. You don't want to be on the edge. You don't want to be so close. You want to have, you know what I'm saying? People, some people don't like to drive with me. You know, because I, you know, I'm, I, I make people nervous when I, but you know what? I had a dream, and I, was, and, I was, and I was flying. I was driving in a car. Man, I'm going to have to shut this thing down. And I was driving, and all of a sudden, I, I derailed. I was, I was like on a hill or something, and I derailed, and my car started going off the cliff. And my, my, my car was going. I was like, oh, my Lord. I'm, I, I was going way too fast, wasn't I, Lord? And I'm going like, oh, and all I said was, Jesus. And my, and my car was going about 50 feet drop, guys. It was a 50-foot drop. And, um, and so as I, uh, as I hit, hit the ground, I actually, the car just straightened up and just landed, not even a scratch. Not even a dent. So what I'm saying to you this morning, maybe some of you are sort of kind of contemplating, or maybe some of you are, been, some of you have been sort of, Oh, yeah, I believe in this once saved, always saved. I can always live what I want to do. No, you can't. Amen. Not to stay in God. Amen. And, and we, we, we want to buy into stuff that will tend to please our flesh. And, um, and, uh, but if you still have the grace, which we do, and, and if you call upon the name of the Lord, even in your stupidity, Jesus will save you. Even if you're going the wrong way. If you still got Jesus in your equation, Jesus, help me. Thank God that just the name of Jesus can pull you out. But I don't want to just live a life like that where I'm calling on the name of Jesus when the devils are trying to kill me. <laughs> or when I'm moving too fast in the fast lanes. Amen. When I'm not heeding warning. So uh, this morning, this is kind of a wake-up call that we need to... Wake up because, you know, it's not just about us. It's about the kingdom of God. Yes. It's about serving God. Amen. And it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing to serve God. Yes. It's a serious thing for me to, be, me to be up here because I get a stricter judgment. Don't ever down, you know, if you say, well, if a pre preacher falls or somebody that preaches the word falls, don't, don't shake your head and say, man, man, I would never do that. Don't ever say that. Amen. Because, they're, because that preacher is a stricter judgment. Yes. God will take care of his preachers. Amen. He will make sure his preachers are going to walk the straight and let, narrow. Amen? Or they ain't going to make it. Amen? So look at this. And this is even a greater um, revelation. You're all preachers. I thought it was just the pulpit minister that has to walk straight. You all got to walk straight. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're all preachers. You're all called to preach the good news. So meekness is an is a attitude of humbleness. And, and when we maintain our attitude of humbleness, which is a teachable spirit, then we can grow. When, we, when we're not teachable, uh, then, then, then we're walking in pride and God sets himself in opposition against the prideful, even a prideful Christian. Blessed are the hunger that thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. This is really good. We got to always stay hungry for God. We got to always remember that things won't ever satisfy us. Amen. Positions won't satisfy us. Um, uh, you know, guys, um, just Stepford wives won't always satisfy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Uh, uh, God is the only thing that can satisfy you. God is the only person, let me put it that way, that can satisfy you. We got to be more focused on our fellowship with God than our work ethic. Thank God for good work ethic. But it's more about our fellowship with him. Amen? Remember Martha and Mary? Martha had a good work ethic. But Mary had a hunger to hear the words of God. Don't put work before God. Don't say, I got to earn a paycheck and put work before God. Put worship before work. Mary worshiped, at the, sat at the feet of Jesus. And, he, and he, Jesus said, Mary done the greater thing. Even though Martha was doing a good thing, she was, she was preparing food and all that. But she wasn't, uh, she, her, she, she thought it was her works that justified her. No, it's our relationship that justifies us. Our fellowship, the blood, follows good works. And then here, it says here, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It goes back to the heart. It's not just an external thing, it's an internal thing. Are we worshiping God with our lips and our hearts far from him this morning? Are we just here just, just to show up, just to see you know, what the pastor's going to say, if it's going to be a little funnier this week than last week? Or are we here to really serve God and to hear from God? Pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Are we peacemakers? Or are we criticizing and minimizing? Are we um, hard on people? Are we, you know what I'm saying? I, listen, God's really, he's working on me. Because I, I'm telling you. Uh, that judgmental attitude is coming out of me. And I hope it's coming out of some of you too. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Don't be so quick to judge, to criticize or minimize. Amen? Amen. And so, even the world, don't be so quick to judge them. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know how they live their life. You don't know if they, you know, some people may not be serving God because of some, some person that called themselves a minister or whatever, took advantage of them sexually, and now they're turned off from the things of God. You know, that happens all the time, it seems like, in some denominations and all that. And a teacher or something, somebody that they looked up to, that they trusted, and then we down them because they're not following God. And we don't even know what they're going through. So we need to make sure that we're walking in love and, 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 and being peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Listen, i got to close here. But there's going to be persecution. We can't always be trying to... See, there's a false sense of an idea that, well, I should always keep peace regardless of what is happening around me. I should, you know, if my brother is sinning, I should not talk to him about it. I, I just don't want to argue with him. Listen, Jesus said that when he came... There's going to be a dividing line in families. He didn't come to bring peace, but he came to bring a dividing line. But yes, he did come to bring peace. It's a paradox. He did come to bring peace with us, with God. But, but when people are serving themselves and you're in a household and they're serving sin, they're serving the devil, there, there's, there's, going to be a, there's going to be friction. And, and Because if you're walking upright and they're not, there's going to be friction. Because your life showing a righteous life will convict their sinfulness. 
And they're going to look at themselves and say, why are you keep walking in love and you're reading your Bible and you're praying? I heard about this one minister that every time he would, uh, he wasn't a minister at the time. Man, I got to close this down. And he wasn't a minister, but, um, he, but, but he had a call of God on his life. And every time he'd come home drunk, you know, and his mom was a Holy Ghost woman that would pray. He would always hear her in the back room praying, crying out to God for him. And he was like, oh, Lord. He would just feel bad about it. Some, ladies, just continue to cry out to God for your children. Let them hear you crying out for God. Let them hear you where they just, their hearts just melt. That you are standing in the gap for their waywardness. Maybe, ladies, let them hear you pray for your husbands that seem to be going off the wrong way. You know, let them know that you're in that prayer closet praying. You know, they're, they're going to have a lump in their throat like, I got to get right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ladies, let them know. Let your husbands know that aren't really on the right path right now that you're holding them up in prayer. Amen? And what God's moving. No matter what it looks like, he's on the move. He's revealing truth to people. He's opening people's eyes to truth. People that may be, Christians that may be on the wayward path are coming back on the right path. Believe that. Your prayers aren't in vain. Continue to stand for what's right. Regardless of what the, where the world's going. Because the world's going to hell. In a handbasket. I don't know if it's in a handbasket, but they're going to hell. And but I, I don't know about you, but I'm going to stay heaven bound. I'm going to stay in the boat. There's a truth. We, we, will, we, ha, we have eternal security as long as we stay in the boat. But if we get out of the boat, we could lose our lives. We want to stay in the boat. Jesus will always be in us, but can, we can get out of him by walking wayward. Amen? Amen? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father. We just thank you for your mercy today. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy and your love. I thank you, Father, that I know that, that, that the people here have a desire for truth. They don't want to walk in any deception. They don't want to be deceived and, and, and run this race in vain. They want to know truth. And, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that your word says it's the truth that makes us free. And maybe there's some of you that... Uh, you know, you've been trying to maybe walk by the letter of the law, but you, don't real, but you didn't realize that it's all about your fellowship with God. If you just start fellowshipping with him, that it will be easy to follow him. It's not about the letter of the law. It's about the fellowship and the relationship with him. And maybe some of you right now have been trying to walk this life by trying to keep the, the, the rules. But I'm going to say this, just keep walking in the love of God. And, and you won't have to try to keep the rules. The rules will be automatically taken care of. So this morning, if maybe you're here today, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, or that you know there's, that the enemy's been tempting you in some areas, and you know you just need to get, get back to God, get, lay some of these things on the altar that's drawing your way. On any of those calls, just raise your hand, because I just want to pray for you where you're at. Amen. I see, the, I see those hands. Thank you for those honest hands. Thank you for those honest hands. Praise God. So I want you to pray this prayer after me and mean it with your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, I don't want anything to take me away from you. I want you, Lord. I hunger and thirst for truth. So, Heavenly Father, I'm making a decision not to hold back in any area of my life, but to serve you full heartedly. And Father, help me to walk this walk pleasing to you by grace by your grace i'm able to do this and i lean on your grace and i'm staying on my face before you to walk this walk victoriously in jesus name amen